In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, here we find Paul writing to the church at Ephesus about preparation for our lives as Christians. Preparation for battle against sin. He says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so that you can be prepared for temptation. I've got a cousin right now who is fighting in Iraq with the army. And by the way, I'd appreciate it if y'all keep him in your prayers. When our soldiers go join the army, they walk into the recruiter's office, they sign their papers, and they put them on a plane and ship them straight to Iraq. No, sir, we do not do that. When they leave the recruiter's office, they go to a military base here in America, and they spend months training. This is your weapon. This is how you use it. This is how you clean it. This is what you do if you lose your weapon. And we prepare them for battle. Are we prepared for battle as Christians? He says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Our enemy is one that is hard to see. You won't ever see him coming. But when he's there, after he's struck, you'll know it. But then it'll be too late, unless you're prepared for him. Verse 13, Wherefore, since this is the case, take unto you the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, then you can stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, with honest conduct honest dealings in your life and the truth of the gospel. Because if you have God's truth in your hand, if that is what you embrace as your armor, as your defense, then you can use that to your advantage just as Christ did in Matthew chapter 4 and He is tempted to the devil. Every answer is as written. And having the breastplate of righteousness, of trying to live a right life, trying to live acceptably before God, submitting yourself to His will, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, a living sacrifice. The preparation of the gospel of peace, having the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace with study. If you aren't in the book, the book will not be in you. You need to be prepared. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And our faith, our conviction that we know that God is, and that we know that Christ is His Son, and the Bible is His Word, and we know that we can have salvation through Him based on this knowledge, this faith. We can protect ourselves from anything. You know, when the hard hits come, do you have a shield of faith to protect you? Something to hold on to? Wherewith ye shall be able to withstand and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and ultimately the salvation through Christ is what saves us from the lethal blows. Because if it were not for our obedience to God's gospel plan of salvation, we would have no hope. We had an audit student the first two quarters of this year, Brother Garrett Waldron, who is a Marine. He had been over in Iraq, and he was talking about the armor they wear over there, and the helmets, and the gear, and the Everything is so hot and it's so heavy. And they don't like wearing their helmets. So one day they were riding around on patrol in Baghdad. And he wasn't wearing his helmet because it was just hot. And they got attacked. And he heard a loud noise. And the next thing he knew, he was laying on the ground and all of his friends were standing around him. He would gotten shot in the head. Thankfully, it just grazed his head and knocked him out cold. But it could have killed him. The next day he was wearing his helmet. We need to make sure that we are wearing the helmet of salvation, that we have become obedient to the gospel of Christ, because without that we have no hope. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In First Samuel chapter 17, we find David facing Goliath in battle. And King Saul says, here, here's my sword, here's my armor, use that. And David says, no, I haven't, tried, I haven't tried these things. I'm not used to them. I haven't practiced with them. I'm not proficient with these weapons, so I'm not going to use them. They will be dangerous to me if I take these things into battle. So I'm going to take the weapon that I know of my sling. 
And brethren, if you do not know how to use this sword, it will be dangerous to you to try to engage Satan in battle, to try to teach the gospel of somebody with it. We have to know our weaponry and be proficient with it. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And let us never forget that we are not alone in battle, that we have God on our side. We have Christ with us. And so when things get tough and we're in the thick of the battle and we're preparing to talk to somebody about the gospel and we're dealing with a difficult situation in our lives, when we find ourselves tempted to sin, stop and pray. Call for backup. And then persevere. Be that watchful. Be that vigilant servant. That one that is prepared. Because brethren, I don't think that y'all would have been too understanding of me coming before you unprepared to teach a lesson. And how much less understanding is God going to be of you standing before Him on the day of judgment unprepared to enter the kingdom of heaven? Because look what He did to, did for you to help you prepare. He died for you. And we need to not take that lightly. Brethren, if you're here this morning and you are not prepared for the kingdom, if you are not wearing the helmet of salvation, have you put on Christ in baptism this morning? If you had not done so, I would ask you why not? You are out there in the battlefields without protection. If you have not done that, you need to this morning, as Peter told the Jews on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, repent of your sins, that is, turn away from them. Be converted, as he told the Jews in chapter 3. Turn away from your sins. And then in the name of Christ, by His authority, be baptized, be immersed in water for the remission of your sins. So you can receive the gift of salvation, verse 21. And verse 47, so you can be added to the church, the kingdom of God, where we have this camaraderie, where we can work together and help one another get to heaven. And if you have already done that, brethren, but you haven't been watchful, you haven't been vigilant, you haven't been prepared, I encourage you this morning to do what you need to do to make yourself prepared. Perhaps you have sinned and fallen away. Maybe there's something in your life that you're just struggling with and having a difficult time dealing with it. Why don't you come and tell us about it and let us pray with you and for you. First John chapter 1 and verse 9, John tells us that if we just confess our sins and pray to God that He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not just some unrighteousness. Not just the stuff that's not that bad. All unrighteousness. There is nothing that we can do that will separate us from God except quit coming back to Him. So if you have any need this morning, don't delay because we don't know when Christ is coming back. We don't know if we're going to live to see this evening service. Why don't you come now? As together we stand and as we sing. There's a great day coming, a great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? There's a bright day coming, a bright day coming, there's a bright day coming by and by. But its brightness shall only come to those who love the Lord. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? <coughs> Are you ready for the judgment 